nightmare mode detected. Whoa, another nightmare, huh? Yeah. Don't worry, we are all good here. Our space journey is going to be fine. Remember, we have a lot ahead of us. Tigerbot, could you please share the itinerary, please? Itinerary loading. All right, here we go. So, we are going to be exploring asteroids, some of which are your source of anxiety. Then we'll also be checking out satellites. Oh, don't forget, we'll be heading to the moon too. I know, I know. Honestly, I'm really looking forward to better understanding how we can protect our Earth. Me too. All right, let's go. Lei, do you remember what happened back in 2013? No one saw that asteroid coming until it was already hurtling through Earth's atmosphere. Yeah, that was a close call. Luckily, it was minor, and the damage was limited. But no need to panic. Statistically, you're more than 10 times more likely to win the lottery. Twice. International scientists are closely monitoring what's happening beyond the planet's atmosphere in real time while using high-tech instruments and cutting-edge analysis. Let's check in with Sun Ye, who is now in one of China's main observatories in Jiangsu province. I am right beside the China Near Earth Object Telescope, also one of the most important night watchers in the International Asteroid Warning Network. Now for this telescope, its mandate ever since it's born in 2006 is to find and track uh, asteroids, also to warn their dangers to the globe with its wide and far field of vision. That system can go global, bringing together partners and industry leaders. Oh, I know just the right person to chat with about this, Dr. Finchtinger from the IEF. Important here is efficient monitoring of near-Earth objects, certainly early detection, and then a globally coordinated uh, mitigation strategy. On the other hand, asteroids and near-Earth objects also provide a unique opportunity for scientific research, and they also will contribute to sustainability for, uh, to life on Earth by providing sources of off-Earth resources. Lei, look at these. They are the China-Brazil Earth Resources Satellites. You know, the two countries have been collaborating on these satellites since the 1980s. Wow. And all the data they gather is crucial for so many fields. They've also been instrumental in protecting the Amazon rainforest by monitoring deforestation. Wow, I think I've got the perfect person to tell us more about this. Today, more than one million images were distributed uh, for uh, many countries around the world. That was the possibility to promote the analysis of images for all countries around the world. It was a really great contribution of Brazil and China for the world. Yiling, look here, there's another one. It's the first astronomical satellite jointly developed by China and France. It's hunting gamma ray bursts right now, and it helps scientists decode a region of the universe. There's more. Shifting gears to the oceans with the China-France Oceanography Satellite. Blasted off in 2018, this satellite helps us understand ocean dynamics. So much crucial data delivered on climate change, storms, and sea safety. Together, who knows what we'll uncover next. This one here, Yilin, the Mr. Sat 2 is a project by China and Egypt. Through our uh, strategic partnership with China, uh, we managed to establish a state-of-the-art assembly integration testing facility, which is considered to be the largest in Africa and the Middle East, uh, in addition to the uh, launching of Master Sat 2 Actually, this was the, our opportunity uh, to learn and to have uh, capacity building in the field of uh, assembly integration testing and uh, operating satellites. All right, just keep track of things. Brazil, France, and Egypt, all coming together with China in space. And there's plenty of room 
for more countries to join. Mm. I think Miss Artola Manny can tell us more about that. Knowing that brilliant minds exist in all countries. There are researchers, there are universities, very sophisticated. The brains are there. The capacity, the infrastructure may not be there, but the, the, the intelligence and the capability is there. And uh, I think developing countries, the spacefaring nations, realize that they have a lot to gain, not just to foster greater international collaboration, but also to benefit from different perspectives and different insights from these countries. Yiling, we're almost there, just approaching the far side of the moon now. I think a lot of us still remember the Chang'e 6 mission that took place here. Chang'e 6 also carried four international payload from ESA, France, Italy and Pakistan. Chang'e 6 has demonstrated beyond any reasonable doubt that uh, a reflector of that small dimensions, size and mass can be observed uh, efficiently with a percent success rate about 30 percent. We have delivered uh, um, another uh, microreflector. Uh, this was uh, a reflector which was in China already since the past. This has been qualified by the Chinese partners. And then we'll proceed with a similar scheme, an old reflector already delivered in China, being qualified by them for Chang'e 8. CNSA has selected uh, uh, Pakistan's rover uh, for, for Chang'e 8. And uh, now, in the, currently, the uh, preliminary design process of the, the rover, rover is underway. Pakistan uh, is now part of uh, the ILRS, uh, and in ILRS, uh, th there are so many uh, projects there, and uh, we look forward uh, to those projects. Awesome! Okay, Lei, I think we can now head to our final stop, the Lunar South Pole. Let's go! Lei, you know what's really cool about the South Pole? There are these areas called permanently shadowed regions that never see the light of day. And it's precisely in those parts that there may be water ice. It's a major objective of the Chang'e 7 mission. It will search for water ice and carry out a series of scientific explorations to deepen the understanding of the lunar South Pole. Looks like this place will really be in the limelight in the years to come. And don't forget, the Chang'e 8 probe will carry out experiments on lunar resource utilization in its vicinity. And along with the Chang'e 7, they will constitute the basic model of the Lunar Research Station. Lei, I know the person to learn a lot more about this endeavor, China's Lunar Exploration Program Chief Designer, Mr. Wu Weiren. We hope to be able to develop the Chang'e 4th century to China. 多个国家参与这样一个国际大科学工程，目前进展还是很顺利的。这个科研站呢，能够人员自动供给，是吧？通信能够就地实现，一月求南极为中心，然后由月面或月球轨道这么组成，可以向更远的地方辐射。按照我